Cushing syndrome. And essentially what this is, is a disorder in which you have increased levels of cortisol. Now, this can happen either because of a problem with the pituitary gland or the adrenal gland. Now, the adrenal gland secretes several hormones, and one of them is cortisol. That's at the heart of this syndrome. The pituitary gland releases ACTH, and ACTH stimulates the production of cortisol from the adrenal gland. Now, there are several types of Cushing's, and they are as follows. There's one type that is known as ACTH dependent, and what that means essentially is the problem is happening because of ACTH. And there's three of those. The first is when the pituitary has a tumor and the pituitary is secreting large amounts of ACTH. And when that happens, it's actually called Cushing's disease. It's the only one that has a different name. The other type of ACTH dependent is when you have an ectopic source of ACTH. And this can happen sometimes, ectopic meaning a place other than normal. For example, lung cancer. Believe it or not, certain lung cancers can produce ACTH. And the final category of ACTH dependent is exogenous ACTH, a patient that's receiving ACTH exogenously. Now, the next one, of course, are the ACTH independent types of Cushing's. And fortunately, there's only two. The first one is when there's an actual tumor in the adrenal gland and the second one is any type of scenario in which a patient is getting exogenous cortisol. So that's a brief overview of the different types of Cushing's. So what are the symptoms? All the symptoms happen because of the adrenal gland being hyperstimulated. So just keep that in mind if you're ever, ever wondering why are all these symptoms happening. Because in addition to cortisol, the adrenal gland also produces other hormones that can cause these symptoms. Symptoms in include hypertension, glucose intolerance. This is due to the mineral mineralocorticoids secreted by the adrenal gland. Obesity, in particular truncal obesity. That's a direct result of cortisol. Purple striae, which is a very common physical exam finding and very commonly described on clinical vignettes. These are sort of like stretch marks that you can see on the patient's abdomen. And if the patient is female, menstrual problems, menstrual irregularities. I've given you some of the key symptoms um, of Cushing's. So how do you diagnose this? Well, the first thing you would measure, of course, are cortisol levels. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Blood cortisol levels and urine cortisol levels. The next thing you would measure, of course, is ACTH levels in the blood. But this will give you a scenario that doesn't really give you a very specific answer. So you have to do a specific test that will figure out for sure what's going on. And that specific test is known as the dexamethasone suppression test and abbreviated DST. So what is this? Basically what this is, is you give a patient a small dose of dexamethasone. And dexamethasone of course is a steroid. And you give it at midnight. So 12. And then the next morning at 8 a.m. you measure the cortisol level in the blood. Now in a normal patient who has no disease, no Cushing's, the morning cortisol will be low. It will be less than 5. Why? Because the steroid has caused it to go down due to a negative feedback mechanism. But in a patient with Cushing's, the cortisol level is not suppressed. It will still be high. It will still be greater than 5. So that's very important to uh, remember 
Now, that just tells you that there's Cushing's. How do you know what type of Cushing's? Meaning, is it from the adrenal gland? Is it from the pituitary? Or is it due to an ectopic? How do we know that? Well, you have to do the dexamethasone suppression test again, but this time with a higher dose of dexamethasone, 8 milligrams. And what that does is it allows you to differentiate. You measure two things, cortisol and ACTH, after you give this 8 milligrams of dexamethasone. And the next morning, you measure the cortisol and ACTH. And fortunately, that allows you to differentiate. If it's an adrenal source, the cortisol in the morning will still be high. But the ACTH is low. Why? Because the adrenal gland is the source of the cortisol. ACTH has nothing to do with it. Pituitary problem. Well, if it's a pituitary problem, the ACTH is high. But the dexamethasone suppression test with high dose does not result in an elevated cortisol. And that is a key way to differentiate. Ectopic, again, ACTH will be high, but the dexamethasone suppression test fails to decrease the cortisol level. So this combination of testing allows you to differentiate what type of uh, primary problem there is, whether the problem is with the adrenal gland, pituitary, or ectopic. Now, in terms of imaging, because there's so many tumors involved, you have to continue your diagnostic search with some imaging of either the pituitary, the adrenal, or some other source if you suspect ectopic. Like if you suspect it's an ectopic source, then you would image the lung. And in terms of treatment, the treatment almost always involves surgery to remove the tumor that's causing the problem. And there is a special drug they sometimes use known as metyrapone. And what it does is it blocks the corticosteroid secretion. So let's take a look at a few vignettes, see what this looks like. 45-year-old woman has been followed for four visits of hypertension, discovered during a routine exam, at which time she was also found to have type 2 diabetes. Initially, an ACE inhibitor failed to effect a fall in blood pressure. On the third visit, the blood pressure had responded to hydrochlorothiazide triamterine, and her blood sugar had fallen to 120. Two hours postprandially, as prescribed, glipizide took effect. You notice that she is not only obese, but also her obesity is centripetal with proximal muscle wasting, associated with a plethoric face and purple striae about her trunk, and she complains of menstrual irregularity. She manifests also supraclavicular fat pads, which of the following is most likely comprehensive clinical diagnosis. Well, they're just asking most likely what's the full picture. We don't know for sure yet. And of course she has hypertension and diabetes. The question tells you that. And the question also tells you that she has obesity. But the whole picture probably involves Cushing's. So that's the answer. Regarding the patient in the previous question, which of the following tests will differentiate Cushing's disease, Cushing's syndrome caused by pituitary overprotection of ACTH from Cushing's syndrome caused by ectopic source, primary adrenal disease, or extrinsic origin? So we discussed that, remember? We have to do a dexamethasone suppression test and a high dose where you use 8 milligrams of dexamethasone, and that will allow you to differentiate and figure out where is the primary source of this person's Cushing. Is it an adrenal problem, a pituitary problem, or an ectopic problem? So the answer is C. And finally, 42-year-old woman with a BMI of 42 who does not smoke presents with hypertension and menstrual irregularities. Pertinent findings on physical exam show a full plethoric appearing face, um, increased facial hair, predominantly truncal obesity, purple striae around the abdomen, scattered ecchymosis over the entire body. Lab studies show hemoglobin of 18, white blood cell count of 18,000, and a normal platelet count. Leukocyte differential shows absolute neutrophilic leukocytosis and absolute lymphopenia and eosinopenia. Which of the following screening tests is most useful in initial workup of this patient? Well, they give you a lot of information here, a lot of good physical exam findings, 
most likely Cushing's. And the test that you really need to do is a dexamethasone suppression test. All the other tests that they include in the answer choices are not really that specific. Plasma cortisol, definitely you measure that, but it's not really going to tell you much in terms of um, etiology. So dexamethasone suppression test, low dose initially, of course, with just one milligram is the initial test to start the diagnostic process.